Hello, welcome back. This is part two of low noise amplifier for L band radio astronomy. And in this video, we are going to measure the S parameters of the low noise amplifier block, which we have designed in the earlier video. And I will explain you the setup. It also looks complex, but it is not that complex. So what you have here is basically a transformer which converts, which down converts 230 volt to say 18 volt AC along with some rectification. So you have plus minus 18 volts DC which comes in. This whole guy is basically a digital bias which I have developed for low noise amplifier. So remotely you could set particular gate or drain to your low noise amplifier. And this bias box basically communicates to the bias card. This is the card which actually takes the input from this control unit along with the power from this control unit and generates the required drain bias, gate bias for the low noise amplifier which we have discussed before. And this is exactly the same unit which I have shown you in earlier video. So now the part, uh, the input port is connected to the port 1 of my Fieldfox VNA. The output port is connected to port 2 of course and now we could do a full 2 port S parameter measurements of your low noise amplifier. Of course with VNA you would be able to measure only the S parameters. So let's focus on S parameters in this video and in next video we will try to measure the noise temperature of this particular low noise amplifier. But before doing that, we have to also consider a few aspects of VNAs. Typically, the VNAs are set to particular power that they apply some power from port 1 and they try to understand how much power is reflected back at port 1 and how much has reached to port 2. And this power level changes from VNA model to model. So this particular model by default gives minus 15 dBm power at the input at po of port 1. But that's a problem actually for while looking at low noise amplifiers because low noise amplifiers often saturate of for high RF power. They are not meant for amplifying high power levels. So of course, the very first thing we, which you have to do with your VNA is to reduce the power level. And that power level I have already reduced to the lowest available that is minus 45 dBm. So I have already reduced the power level of my VNA all the way to minus 45 dBm. Of course, for such a low power level, the instrument would show some noise. So I have also reduced my IF bandwidth to 1 kilohertz. And then I'm looking at all my S parameters between the frequency range of 400 megahertz up to 2 gigahertz. If you could recall from our earlier video, we used to have a very high gain in the frequency range of 600 megahertz all the way up to 1600, 1700 megahertz and a very well noise, very well input and output matching all the way from 6, 700 megahertz to 1600 megahertz or so. But that was just purely based on theory, doing some S parameter manipulations in Python. But from there, of course, I have spent a lot of time and taken a lot of efforts to bring all the tiny details of the design into the Python code and then simulate the entire LNA uh, using my own codes. And this is the final output, which is a practical measurement on the design. Of course, the practical measurements do deviate a bit from my predicted values, but nonetheless, they give very satisfactory performance in terms of all S parameters. So have a look at S11. The first marker is at 600 megahertz. The second marker is a classical radio astronomy frequency 1420 megahertz, while the third marker is 1600 megahertz. So between all these three markers, the input reflection coefficient is minus eight, minus nine dB and below, which is reasonably good for LNA. Have a look at S22, which is the output matching. It stays all the way below minus 12, minus 13 dB up to 1600 megahertz and then it starts to go up. If you want to cross check, you could go back to my earlier video and have a look at simulated S parameters using just ideal lump components and the transistor S parameters. And they are fairly close to what we are 
have looking right now. The third thing that is the S21. Have a look at the very nice gain flatness. It is in 0.5 dB, which is really, really good. So it has a very flat 40 dB gain all the way from 600 megahertz up to 1600 megahertz with plus minus 0.5 dB variation only, which is really good. And S12 is actually not at all seen because it is very well below the whatever you see as a noise floor around minus 45, 50 dB. It is even below that because it's a st third stage LNA. If you could recall from our earlier video already for a two stage LNA design, the S12 or the isolation was of the order of 50 dB. So naturally when I add the stage 3, it would be even less. Also, I have taken enough care to design the matching networks between stage 2 and 3 such that the high gain at the low frequency side has attenuated by 3 to 4 dB while some 4 5 dB gain has been added to the high frequency side by the very last stage of my transistor, of my amplifier. So altogether, there is a very nice gain flatness from 600 megahertz to 1.6 gigahertz making this a really suitable LNA for doing radio astronomy observations. Even if this amplifier looks very suitable for our radio astronomy applications, one should not forget the possible interference from mobile and that may completely saturate this LNA. So one has to also look at what the term which is referred to the 1 dB compression point of the low noise amplifier or for any amplifier. And it is the power at which the gain drops by 1 dB. So right now the power given by this VNA at the input of the low noise amplifier is of the order of minus 45 dBm. So I could increase this power a little bit, little bit more, more such that my gain is reduced by 1 dB or so. And one could definitely simulate all those things using a modern EDA tools, but you have to do a harmonics bal harmonic balance type of simulation. I haven't done that. So I will simply practically measure the 1 dB compression point. And based on that, uh, the ideal way, uh, based on that, one could figure out how much attenuation to mobile bands is needed such that your LNA doesn't saturate. So let me increase the power level which is given by this VNA at the input of the low noise amplifier. I will do that by going, going to measurement setups and power level say minus 40 dBm. And let it update. And now if you could see the gain has dropped down to about 1 dB or so. Earlier it was just little bit above 40 dB and now it is 39 dB and so. So I could say that around minus 40 dBm this particular low noise amplifier unit starts entering into saturation. And therefore no external RFI should have its power level reaching at the input of this LNA more than minus 40 dBm. But we have already taken care of that by designing a really, really nice circular waveguide filter, which you have seen in earlier videos. So with that, no mobile power could reach at the input of this LNA with strength better than minus 40 dBm. And you could have very linear re receiver for your observations. So with this, I will stop this video. We have already seen the S parameters of our device, uh, which we have designed uh, in earlier video. And in next video, we will use this particular low noise amplifier along with liquid nitrogen to figure out the noise temperature of this guy. Till then, see you.